In this video, we're going to look at how to solve equations by completing the square. So up till now, if you've watched the previous videos within this section, you would know two different ways to solve this kind of equation for number one. You could either factorize or you would use the quadratic formula. Those are both correct and they could work for this one as well. However, teachers would like us to know a third way and that is called completing the square. So in a test, you can use whichever method you like unless you have been asked to use a specific, specific um, type of method, okay? So there's three different methods. There's factorizing, solving by using the formula and completing the square. Completing the square is a bit of a weird one. It's a bit tricky. But if you just practice it a few times, it's it's very repetitive. It follows the same pattern every time. Just like what we saw with the square root questions in the previous video, they become very repetitive once you've practiced them a few times. So the way to do it is the following. For number one, I'm just going to write that out quickly. x squared minus 3x minus 4 equals to 0. Now, there are different ways of doing completing the square. So your teacher might have a slightly different variation to the way I'm going to do it. Don't panic check the final answer that should always be the same okay so some teachers do things slightly differently they just do it in a yeah some teachers just do it in different orders so what most teachers typically do is they will start off by moving the number that doesn't have an x to the right if your teacher doesn't do that that's absolutely fine the next step is to write the x squared minus 3x as it is then you are going to say plus, then you're going to make a bracket, you're going to take this number, divide it by 2, and square it. Okay, so that is a, a very repetitive thing that we are going to see happening. You're always going to add the middle number, or half of it, and you're going to square that. All right. Now, this is where it could get a bit weird because different teachers use different methods. But look what we've just done. We've just added something to the sum. Now, that's not allowed. You can't just add something to a sum. So how do you undo that? You would have to minus that again, right? So some teachers are going to put the minus part over here and then put the 4 over there. And then in the next step, they'll take this term and they will move it over. Whereas some teachers, they will just take it over from the very beginning. So they'll do something like this. They'll just say equals 4 plus negative 3 over 2 squared. See, so they, instead of writing it over here first, they just put it on the right-hand side immediately. Now all that you're going to do is you're going to open up this bracket. And in this bracket, you're going to put this term over here, that's just x, and you're going to put this part over there, which is minus 3 over 2, and you're going to put a square. This part here, you can just go type in on your calculator, and if you do that, you're going to get a value of 25 over 4. In the next step, we want to get rid of the square. So what do we remember in the previous video? We wanted to get rid of a square root, and so we added a square on both sides. Now we want to get rid of a square, so we add a square root on both sides. Mathematically, though, whenever you add a square root, you should always add a plus and a minus. And so what I mean by that is you're going to add a little plus and a minus on this side, and then the square root of 25 is, well, you can just type this all in your calculator, but the square root of 25 is 5, and the square root of 4 is 2. Now what you do, because remember, these quadratic equations, they should give us two answers. So let's choose the positive for now. So you're going to get, oh no, let's first leave that for now, and let's do this. Let's say x is equal to plus minus 5 over 2 plus 3 over 2. See, I've just brought this one over. Now to get our two answers, we will use a plus for the first one if you would like. You can also use a minus for the first one. Okay, and if you type that in on the calculator, you're going to get an answer of 4. And then for the other one, so I'm going to say or, and then you can do x equals to minus 5 over 2 plus 3 over 2. And if you do that on the calculator, you're going to get x equals 2 minus 1. And those are the answers. If you remember in the previous previous video, so I think two videos ago, maybe even three, 
the answer for that equation was 4 and minus 1 but at that time we used factorizing so you can use factorizing completing the square and the formula and they should all give you the same answer they just different methods of doing the sum moving on to number two so if that felt a bit tricky then that's usually the case with maths. It will feel a bit weird in the beginning, but after we've done these five examples, you will have a good idea of what's going on. So the first step is we just obviously write out the equation. I'm going to switch things around a bit and put the zero on the right. There's no harm in doing that, like that. Then, so this is where most teachers will put the minus, the plus 10 on the other side. If your teacher doesn't, it's absolutely fine. Just watch carefully what your teacher is doing. You'll see that it is very much the same technique there's just different ways of writing it out okay so the first part would be to just say x squared minus 7x then we're going to say plus bracket this number divided by 2 squared okay so it's always like that then we could say minus the same thing over here or we can just put it on the other side as a positive okay there we go so if you can remember how to do all that that's the most difficult part now it's easy, we just go open up a bracket like that, and you take this one and this one. It's the two things that have the square. Can you see that? There's a square and there's a square. They go in the bracket. And then on the other side, you'll just type all of this on the calculator. Gives you 9 over 4. How do we undo the square? We then take the square root on both sides. Just remember the plus and minus in the front on this side. So on the left, you just get what's ever inside the square, inside the square, so it's just that. On the right, you get plus and minus. The square root of 9 is 3, and the square root of 4 is 2. And then you just bring the 7 over 2 over. There we go. And then to get your first answer, you could use the plus, for example. And that's going to give you an answer of 5. Or you could, as we would say, or you can use the negative. So x is equal to negative 3 over 2 plus 7 over 2, and that's going to give you an answer of 2. And there's the answers. No need to do any checks for these ones. They don't have any square roots in the beginning, and so those are the answers. Once again, if you watched some of the previous videos, we did the same question using factorizing instead, and we got the same answer. Moving on to number 3. Number 3 is a little bit different in the way that it's got a in the way that the number in front of the x squared is not a 1, whereas with number 1, there was a 1 there, number 2, there was a 1. So with completing the square, the number in front of the x squared has to be a 1. This is so important. It has to, has to, has to be a 1. So how do we get rid of this minus 3? Well, you've got to take it out, right? So you've got to take out minus 3 as a common factor, and let's see what we have left. It will be x squared minus, because you took out a minus from that plus, 7 over 3x minus 20 over 3 equals to 0. Now, many people ask me, can we get rid of the minus 3? Sometimes yes, sometimes no. If it is an equation, yes. Well, if it is, that was, okay. If it is an equation which has a 0 on the one side, yes, you can get rid of that minus 3. Let me show you what's actually happening. To get rid of this minus 3, you would have divided both sides by minus 3. So it would have been something like this and like this. And so on the left-hand side, the minus 3 appears to have just disappeared. And on the right-hand side, 0 divided by anything is still 0. And so it appears that the minus 3 has just disappeared completely. That is simply because of the fact that the 0 almost swallowed it up. But if you didn't have a 0 on the other side, then you can't get rid of that minus 3. That typically happens when you are in the section on functions, busy doing a parabola, and you're completing the square. Then you sometimes have a y on the other side. Then you can't just get rid of the number that you take out. You've got to leave it in front of the bracket. All right, so now that that number is a 1, we can carry on with our usual technique. So we typically take the 20 over 3 over to the other side. You don't have to. Just check what your teacher does, whatever's best for you. Then we start with our normal pattern of x squared minus 7 over 3x plus whatever this number is divided by 2. So it's minus 7 over 3 divided by 2 squared. 
you do the same on the other side so there already was a 20 over 3 then you're just going to say plus and then you're going to put the exact same bracket to squared now 7 over 3 divided by 2 if you type 7 over 3 divided by 2 on your calculator it's going to give you 7 over 6 if you're using a Casio calculator and you're trying that sum and you're typing it in on the calculator like this and you're not getting 7 over 6 it's because the Casio has got a problem so just make sure how you're typing it on the calculator you want the bigger line to be this one and not this one over here okay it's a Casio problem so just look out for that if you want to get around that you just say 7 over 3 divided by 2 on your calculator and so that's going to give you x squared minus 7 over 3 x plus 7 over 6 squared. You don't have to go actually square this part. Remember, we haven't done that in the previous ones. You don't actually square it. You leave it just as it is. On the right-hand side, however, you can put all of that on the calculator as it is. And then it's always best to leave it in the fraction form, not as a mixed number, but as a, as a, just a fraction like this, improper fraction, 289 over 36. Then what we do is we open up our bracket and we take this one and, ooh, there's meant to be a minus over here that I forgot to carry down, sorry. That'll be x and then you take whatever's inside this bracket. Remember it's the two things that have the square. So that'll be minus 7 over 6 equals 289 over 36. Now what we need to do is get rid of the squares. So we square root both sides and so that square root simply gets rid of the square and on the left so we get that on the right remember the plus minus and if you type in the square root of that on your calculator oh it works out nicely you get plus minus 17 over 6 we then take the 7 over 6 over and then let's choose the positive for now so that's 17 over 6 plus 7 over 6 that's going to give you 24 over 6 which is going to be 4 so that's the first answer and then for the next one we can take the negative so that's negative 17 over 6 plus 7 over 6 and that's going to give us x is equal to negative 10 over 6 if you want to simplify that 2 goes into both of those that's negative 5 over 3 and that's the answer for that question moving on to number 4 so remember because it's an equation you are allowed to divide by 3 Yes, I said there should be a zero on the left-hand side, I mean on, on one of the sides, but if you had to imagine bringing that 9 over to the left, then there would be a zero on the right-hand side. So you don't have to physically see the zero, but it just needs to be an equation. For example, you don't want to have this. You don't want to have a y on the one side. You want to see stuff like that or 3x squared minus 7x minus 1 then you actually see the 0 but you don't want to have any y's you just want to have that x squared then you can divide you can get rid of that 3 so we're going to divide each term by 3 because remember the, in, when completing the square this has to be a 1 it doesn't have to be a 1 if you are using the formula but for completing the square it must so if we divide that by 3 you get x squared you divide 7 by 3 you get 7 over 3 and if you divide 9 by 3 you get 3 remember you must divide everything by 3 not just the stuff on the one side and so now it's easy we just go and follow our usual steps so x squared minus 7 over 3x plus whatever this number is divided by 2 squared okay so it's always the same thing then on the right we already have a 3 and then you just add the same square bracket on this side and now in the next step we can simply open up the bracket and then have a x which is this one and then we're going to use this one over here 7 over 3 divided by 2 is the same as 7 over 6 and then on the right hand side you'll just type all of this on the calculator and that would give you a value of 157 over 36 the next step is then to take the square root on both sides and that's going to give you x minus 7 over 6 equals to the plus minus square root of 157 over 36 you just type in your calculator and when you do that the calculator is going to give you a square root of 157 
over a 36 that isn't in the square root. So that's absolutely fine. You just write it like that. Then we get x by itself. So we have plus minus the square root of 157 over 36 plus 7 over 6. So then for the first one, I would just use the plus. That's going to be x is equal to the square root of 157 over 36 plus 7 over 6. You then just type all of that in on the calculator. And so your first answer is going to be x is equal to 3.25. Or you could do the negative one, and that's going to give you negative square root of 157 over 36 plus 7 over 6. And that's going to give you... Oh, just realized that over here, this was meant to change to a 6. This was meant to change to a 6. And so was that meant to change to a 6. Luckily, the 3.25 is still correct because I was using my value that I had on the calculator. And so I just wrote it down wrong. So then that means that this one must also be a 6. And so if you type all that on the calculator, you're going to get a value of negative 0.92. And the last question for this video will be number 5. And so I'm just going to write the 0 on the right hand side. It just might be, feels more comfortable. So first step is, with completing the square, you don't want the number in the front of the x squared to be a anything other than a 1. And so we first have to divide everything by 2. And so that's going to give you a minus 4x plus 9 over 2. So I've divided everything by 2. Then what you typically want to do is move the 9 over 2 over to the other side where it will become negative. And then we can start with the normal process. So it's x squared minus 4x plus this number, or oh sorry, this number over 2 squared equals. And then on the other side, we've already got the minus 9 over 2. And then we just add this part as well. So it's minus 4 over 2 squared. Then we just open up a bracket in the next step with a square. We take the two squares, so that's x minus 4 over 2, like that, equals this part on the right. You just type it in on the calculator. That's going to give us negative a half. This part over here is 4 over 2, so I can just write that as 2 if I want. Then you just take a square root on both sides. And here's where we get an error, because you can't take a square root of a negative number. And so for this whole question, it is a no solution. If that ever had to happen in a test, to double check and make sure it's correct, you could then try solving this on using the quadratic formula, and that would also give you an error. That's the end of this video. Thanks for watching.